गुड मॉर्निंग डियर स्टूडेंट्स लास्ट टाइम यू हैव लर्न अबाउट वॉट इज मेड बाई करंट वॉट मेक्स द इलेक्ट्रॉन्स टू फ्लो सो दिस टाइम वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट हाउ दिस इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर फ्लोइंग ड्यू टू वॉट इट इज फ्लोइंग राइट सो यू हैव लर्न लास्ट टाइम दैट इट रिक्वायर्स सम फोर्स एंड दैट फोर्स इज नथिंग बट द इलेक्ट्रोमोटिव फोर्स और द पोटेंशियल डिफरेंस राइट सो नाउ लेट अस सी हाउ दिस फोर्स इज जेनरेटेड through means of or by means of an electric cell so electric cell is the one which gives the electromotive force or which has the potential difference to generate the flow of electrons so today we shall learn about the electric cells and uh, in electric cells today we are going to focus on dry cell so now let us proceed with the electric cell so first you should know about what are electric cells what type of electric cells are there so electric cell is the one which produces the uniform flow of charges and what are these charges we are going to learn today so there are first of all you should know that there are two main types of cells one is the galvanic cell and the other is electrolytic cell now students this is not there in your textbook but it is an additional information so that you can understand well about what are cells so remember that there are two different types of cells they are galvanic and electrolytic cells so galvanic cells are non rechargeable so uh, and are also called as primary cells so you might be knowing about this uh, the ones which is used in the torch or maybe your remote control all these are called as galvanic cells so they are non rechargeable that means you cannot recharge them okay so since uh, you cannot recharge them they were the first discovered so they are called as the primary cells also then electrolytic cells are rechargeable so rechargeable like the mobile uh, battery which you have in your mobile okay um, can be recharged okay fine so these are called as electrolytic cells and are also called as secondary cells then galvanic cells what these it does it turns the chemical energy into electrical energy that means these cells whatever chemical uh, are there in those cells uh, because of the chemical reactions inside this galvanic cells it converts this chemical energy in uh, from within into electrical energy and so due to this the electric current is generated whereas electrolytic cells are just the opposite they use the electrical energy and convert it into chemical energy like for example when you are keeping the mobile uh, for uh, recharging right or charging the battery when it is getting over that means over here what is done is electrical energy is used and it is been transformed into chemical chemical energy so that again when you are removing it out of charging when it is fully charged that means when it is charged and when it is used it will be using used as a galvanic cell here that means it functions both as electrolytic cell as well as galvanic cell so when you are keeping it for recharging it is acting like the electrolytic cell that is it is converting electrical energy into chemical energy whereas when you use the mobile after recharging it will use that same chemical energy into electrical energy and so you can you know go on recharging it so many times it does not get over whereas galvanic cells once you use them once the chemical reactions are over inside it it is useless you have to just throw them out because it cannot be recharged fine so let us proceed now here you can see that there is uh, the cell shown here and a circuit shown here right so how does this circuit works okay first of all you, uh, you should know that it is the simplest uh, uh unit to generate the electricity so it generates electricity from the chemical reactions so uh, you can see how the uh, you know electrons are moving so since it converts this chemical energy into electrical energy uh, what it actually does is uh, after the chemical reaction when the chemical reaction is going on it starts pumping electrons along the wires so you know the wire is a conductor last time i have already explained to you about what is meant by a conductor so this conductor through this conductor there will be flow of electron 
but how this electrons are flowing it's because of the chemical reaction which is going on in the cell which forces the electrons to move within the uh, wire so this is how a cell works but what are the reactions there you will be uh, studying something about redox reactions or oxidation and reduction reaction in standard 10 so same thing happens inside a cell there are oxidation and reduction reactions taking place inside the cell which generates the electrons and these electrons are again now forced to move within the wire and and this is how there is flow of electrons which generates electricity fine so two or more cells comprises of a battery so remember what is a battery battery is nothing but two or more cells now students uh, you might be aware uh, that uh, uh, battery is generally we are saying even for a so single cell we are saying battery but my dear uh, students sci from scientific point of view a battery is the one which are you know kept in a series it is also called as a galvanic series of cells so when these cells are kept in a series then only they constitute a battery a single cell is never called as a battery so battery means either two or more than two cells are called as a battery now let me show you little uh, behind here okay so uh, uh, two or more cells forms a battery now what is actually going inside the cell let us try to let me try to explain to you okay now inside the cell uh, there are substances like acids now you will be studying in standard 9th about something called as dissociation that means uh, an acid or maybe a base you are going to learn about acid and base also in standard 9th in detail in standard 8th also you are going to learn about acids and base and salt so uh, later on you will understand what I told in this video so you might be knowing still some acids like you know hydrochloric acid you might have heard this word hydrochloric acid sulfuric acid nitric acid okay then there are salts like sodium chloride or also commonly called as table salt okay and then there are bases like sodium hydroxide so all these substances when they're dissolved in water they separate out into their respective ions positive ions and negative ions so that is called as its dissociation so substances like acid dissolved in water forms charged particles and these charged particles are only nothing but the positively charged particles called as cations and uh, negatively charged particles are called as anions okay remember students positively charged uh, particles are called as cations and negatively charged ions are called as anions so these are um, uh, present uh, within the uh, cell and these type of solutions which uh, you know when dissolved in water forms their charged particles that is positive charge called as cation and negative charge called as anion these type of solutions solutions when i mean anything which is dissolved in a uh, solvent is called as a solution so here i have told, told you that when an acid is dissolved in water it separates out into its positive and negative charge so uh, cations and anions respectively so these type of solutions are also called as electrolytes so this word you remember dear students electrolytes okay and there are metal rods you can see in this picture here that there are two metal rods metal means you might be aware of about what are metals like gold silver platinum okay copper aluminum all these are called as metals so when metal rods are dipped in the uh, electrolytes uh, they act as the electrodes so these metal rods are also called as electrodes 
okay whereas the solution of uh, any acid dissolved in water or maybe a base or salt dissolved in water is called as electrolyte metal rods are called as electrodes okay so these metal rods are always deep inside the uh, electrolyte fine so remember all this thing so the positive electrode is called as the anode and negative electrode is called as the cathode okay remember this positive electrode is called as cathode and negative uh, sorry uh, anode and negative is called as cathode now when since these are positive again positive and negative charge uh, electrodes these electrodes what they do now whatever dissociated charges are there or separated charges are there in the solution or in the electrolyte they are getting attracted towards these electrodes okay negative ions are going towards anode or cations goes to uh, sorry anions goes towards anode see ya uh, remember anions are negatively charged but anode is a positively charged electrode anion is a negatively charged particle whereas anode is a positively charged electrode okay so anions moves towards anode aa and cations moves towards cathode so cathode is a negatively charged electrode whereas cations are positively charged uh, ions okay so these are going towards the cathode so remember aa cc so anode means anions and cathode means cations so which are opposite oppositely charged so opposite always attracts so you know by this so remember the opposite charges are moving towards the opposite electrodes so you can see and this only drives the electrons when this reaction is going on there are so many electrons are released in this reaction and so what happens is that this makes the flow of electrons this makes the flow of now i hope so you have understood about how these electrons are generated and due to which the electron uh, due to which the electricity is generated from chemical energy now where are these uh, uh, you know electro uh, this electric cells used okay so you know these electric cells uh, can be used uh, in uh, you know various types of gadgets like watches to submarines okay so watches you will learn about what are those cells they are also called as button cells but they are modified versions of the dry cells so they are used from you know watches to submarines then uh let us now learn about what is meant by a dry cell or how it was uh, so dry cell uh, is you know used in the radio sets then they are also used in the wall clocks they are also used in the torches okay and they are available in different sizes 3 to 4 sizes now let us learn about the dry cell so before learning about the uh, dry cell let us know who is this person this person is also known as george leclanche okay so you might have heard about him before so he is the french engineer george leclanche uh, who invented a battery uh, be which bears his name in the year 1866 so it is also called as a leclanche cell now why we need to uh, you know why you need to know about this person is because this person was the one who made the first battery okay and uh, uh, in whose honor the name was leclanche cell so the battery what he made was quite heavy and was even prompt to break was steadily uh, improved in the later years in slightly modified form now leclanche cell is also known as dry cell fine so um, uh, so it uh, but it was because of carl uh, gosner okay uh, who you know constructed the first commercially used dry cell okay so dry cell is the modification of the wet leclanche cell now let us learn about the dry cell in detail how it is constructed fine so here uh, for this we need to you know try to cut the dry cell into 
two parts so dry cell is a modification the wet leg lunges so the parts of the dry cell may be understood by cutting the dry cell vertically okay so here the positive now you have just now learned that there has to be electrodes okay and there has to be an electrolyte so even in the dry cell you will find what type of an electrolyte is present what are the electrodes so here the positive electrode is the graphite rod you might have heard about graphite graphite is nothing but the form of a carbon or allotrope of carbon which you are going to learn in the uh, next uh, um, uh, you know uh, year fine so now let us learn about how it is constructed so here the positive electrode is the graphite rod okay there is a zinc cover which is acting like the cathode okay so then uh, the electrolyte is uh, the pulp of zinc chloride and ammonium chloride enclosed in a metal cylinder okay so there is even manganese dioxide and carbon okay uh, manganese dioxide and carbon so here the graphite acts like the anode whereas uh the so the graphite acts like the anode whereas the um, zinc metal acts like the cathode remember students and which is the electrolyte here the electrolyte is nothing but the paste of uh, ammonium chloride and zinc chloride fine so remember the students there is a wet pulp of zinc chloride and ammonium chloride so there is a graphite rod at the center of the cell okay fine so remember this then uh, let us proceed further now okay uh, then you can see that there is manganese dioxide uh, in this uh, along with carbon fine enclosed in a metal cylinder so outside the graphite rod manganese dioxide is present fine now the jelly is prevented from drying up by sealing the top of the cell with a pitch or asphalt so whatever is there inside it shouldn't be uh, dry and because of that there is a pitch then there is an insulating positive terminal is the uh, uh, upper knob at the top and negative terminal is at the base okay fine so the uh, Uh, this is regarding the working of the uh, the construction of the cell now i hope so you have understood about how is the construction of the dry cell so you can see the picture over here you can see the positive terminal uh, which is the graphite rod okay and you know uh, also acting as the anode whereas the cathode is the zinc metal okay which is surrounding it then there is paste of ammonium chloride and uh, zinc chloride which is acting like the electrode fine and positive terminal is uh, is at the top uh whereas the base no, uh, base is called as the negative terminal so this is how a uh, dry cell is constructed and you know why it is called as dry cell it's because instead of using liquid it uses only the wet paste uh, wet paste fine and uh, since it uses the wet paste the chemical re reaction inside it proceeds very slowly and so a large current cannot be obtained from this so a single cell electric cell can generate around 1.5 volts only volts of potential difference so compared to electric cells which are using liquids the shelf life of dry cells is longer why because the reaction is slow fine and dry cells are very convenient to use as this can be held in any direction with respect to ground and can be used in mobile instrument mobile instruments means portable instruments you can uh, carry them anywhere so i hope so you have understood about the dry cell in the next video we are going to learn about what are lead acid cell and nickel cadmium cells so till then students thank you